bake, and they adapted to that by fermenting the heck out of it, which helps to, uh, you know, inactivate lectins. Right. And then they and they eat tons of rice, which actually is the is a form of antidote. Um, uh, to soy, it helps to block estrogens, and it's a and it's a it's a good glycoprotein that helps to nourish the the villi. And so, if they weren't if they weren't eating as much rice as they were, I think the soy would have undone them years ago. So the the, the cultures, it's cool to see that the cultures that have adapted certain things, they've they've also adapted the uh, the, the means by which to. Uh, you know, to deal with them, like the, the like the Hispanics, the, the Mexicans, they they don't. Like a comedian was making a joke of the other day, they they don't eat fried beans, they eat refried beans. You know, why why refry them? Why wait? Why waste all of that time? <laughs> and, and it's because cooking inactivates lectins, and the, and cooking them once is not good enough. They've got to recook them and then cook the stew out of them. Because if not, they'll have horrible gas and everything associated with the beans, which is the warning sign that the lectins of the beans are doing a whammy on their intestinal tract. So we've all we've all learned how to adapt. We're just now figuring out why those adaptations work. All very well put. I um, this is this is a great conversation. I think you're enlightening a lot of our our viewers and listeners with some of the basic concepts of food. Um, Tell me a little bit about. Um, so you mentioned Asian. What there was something you talked about wheat in the mid 400s, um, yes. as far as the processing and something that happened there. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, you know, and that's that's. I'm so glad you asked that question because this is just the coolest part of all to me as far as gluten is concerned. You know, especially in light of some of most some of the most recent uh, research, which you'll find you'll find excerpts of on celiac.com. Uh, Scott Adams doing a great job. I mean, what a, what a fantastic job he's done with that website and keeping everybody up to date on the latest things. And Scott and I, we, we, we correspond pretty regularly, and I've been a contributing editor, writer for their, their celiac.com newsletter, and I really appreciate them taking me on board and letting me rant on that, news, <laughs> on that newsletter like I'm doing today. But, you know, the, the cool thing about it is that I found this when I started studying weed. I just went, you know, like everybody else, how in the world did this happen? You know how 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 could the see the gluten have gone so badly, and you know and I, I I'm I'm spiritually oriented you know and I'm going what what kind of a mistake did God make in making wheat, you know and so I started researching the history of wheat why not you know it, it, wheat's in the Bible barley's in the Bible they ate tons of it it was one of the seven sacred grains of Israel you know uh, it, it was wheat one of the things that God made to limit the life of people to 120 these are the kind of questions I was asking knowing that Methuselah lived to be almost a thousand years, you know, was it the wheat that was maybe making, maybe, was it the, the wheat that Moses ate that contributed to his death at 120, <laughs> you know? And so these are kind of the questions I'm asking, um, and so I, I go back and I start researching, and I find this on the, on, the, on the disc, the World Book Encyclopedia disc that came with my computer, Peter, the history of common wheat. And the history of common wheat is that they, they say approximately the mid-400s A.D., 436 A.D., 437 A.D., that our northern Germanic ancestors, those people living in Germany uh, that ended up going north and becoming the Vikings and went left and conquered uh, you know, England and went south and be, you know, became the you know, – invaded uh, Italy, took over all of Western Europe, that, that they decided that they were tired, obviously, of having bread that broke. You know, and so they took they took two they took the original wheat, which we know now is einkorn wheat. That's E I N K O R N wheat. Google that; it's really cool. Okay, and so einkorn wheat is is triticum monococcum, and they took two other forms of triticum, all of which are in the grass family, and they bl and they blended. They, this is what they suspected from the analysis of today's wheat. They, blend, they took these two forms of triticum, and they blended it to original wheat, to einkorn wheat, and that's when the celiac disease hit them. They, they spelled it with an O in it, you know, Old English spelling, C-O-E-L-I-C, you know, and, they, and it, it hit them like a ton of bricks. They developed a dysentery. Children were dying. People were dying off. There was a major die-off, and as I wrote in my answer, I didn't find that it was any coincidence whatsoever that the plague came out of hiding after 1,500 years and struck them and hit them like a ton of bricks. The plague hit them, uh, and we who know what gluten does to our immune system, it makes perfectly good sense, and within 50 years we plunged into what we call the Dark Ages. 
all of this happened in the mid 400s AD, and we know that they created common wheat. We don't know exactly what the gluten content was of the wheat that they created, but we know that the original wheat was about 5 to 7% gluten, and we know that the wheat we eat now, especially the Canadian hard, hard wheat variety, is 55% gluten. And as, as if that's not enough, anybody who grabs a bag of, of wheat bread, of bread, you know, any bread, and they look at the ingredients, they'll see that wheat is the first ingredient, wheat gluten is the second ingredient. So as if the 55 is not enough, we're adding more gluten to the wheat than, than ever before, and that's how we've gotten this, this bread that's spongy and it no longer, it no longer um, you know, is completely crushed in your grocery bag. It, it bounces out almost like it's memory foam. And, and, that's what, and that's what the gluten has done. Uh, but back then, in biblical days, of course, when they talked about breaking bread, it was literal. They broke bread. Bread was like crackers. It was like the matzah bread that, that, that the Jewish people still eat at Passover and that kind of a thing. You know, it, it, and so uh, we got tired of it like people do, I guess, and they said they started genetically um, engineering wheat back then. But the, you know, by blending that, you know, becoming, you know, and that and that was their. It turns out that was their incentive for migrating all over West, East, uh, Western Europe was to find more fertile land to grow this wheat in, because they adapted, just like the dogs we talked about. Mm -hmm. It was a devastating thing. It probably wiped them out by the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. But they adapted, and um, and the and the symptoms go underground when you adapt. And they and they go and they go on with it, and they go up, and they become the Vikings and all the other things we talk about. Um, but the, the the latest research now is suggesting that einkorn wheat, original wheat, can actually be tolerated by celiacs. Interesting. Have you seen studies on that yet, or is that um... Scott? Scott, the last I saw was on was on celiac.com. That Scott is uh, has an article that he quotes on there that they're working on this now. I don't. I, I, I honestly, I just read this, you know, not long ago, and I haven't, I haven't gone ahead and pursued it. But, but it makes perfectly good sense to me that the original wheat would not even do this to a celiac, even a diagnosed celiac. They are looking at the possibility that einkorn wheat is going to join millet and flax and sorghum um, as being a, a grain that celiacs can tolerate. Um, and uh, and that is fascinating to me. That shows you that we did this. Man did this. We did this to ourselves, just like we do everything else. You know, we jump we jump ship from goats to cow milk, and we invited the casein plague. We dug up soy out of the ground in that one little area of in Asia where it should have never been touched. We cultivated corn from down in Middle America, the only place it ever grew. It was a useless grain, and over thousands of years, we cultivated into a beast that kills other plants and can't even reproduce. 